Hi, my name is Tony, and this is Every Frame of Painting. The other day, someone asked me to describe my editing process. So I started talking about organizing footage and doing selects, and she said, no, your actual process. Like, how do you know when to cut? And I couldn't describe it at all. Like a lot of editors, I cut based on instinct. Nothing gets in the way of the editing process. It's the process of your thinking. I, I don't cut from what I call knowledge. I, I, I have to come into and I have to feel it. It's the same way for me. I have to think and feel my way through the edit. So today, I'd like to talk about that process. How does an editor think and feel? The first thing you need to know is that editing is all about the eyes. More than any other factor, the eyes tell you the emotion of the scene. And the great actors understand that they convey more through their eyes than through dialogue. I so said, I haven't got anything to say. <laughs> so he said, what do you mean you haven't got anything to say? He said, of course you've got things to say. You've got wonderful things to say. But you sit there and listen, think of these extraordinary things to say. How are you? Sweetheart, uh, have you tried these? These are wonderful. And then decide not to say them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you're doing. And when I'm watching footage, this is what I'm looking for. Moments where I can see a change in the actor's eyes, like when he's making a decision. Shots like these are powerful because they work so well with other shots. For instance, when we cut from his eyes to what he's looking at, It tells us, without words, what he's thinking. The next concept was really hard for me to learn. Emotions take time. When we watch people on screen, we feel a connection to them. And that's because we have time to watch their faces before they speak. And time to watch them afterwards. Editors have to decide, how much time do I give this emotion? So let's try an exercise. Look at this shot. What do you feel while watching this? Now let's try it again. What do you feel while watching this? Was it a different emotion? Editing is full of decisions like these, where four seconds makes a big difference. And these choices are difficult. There are no right answers. Some emotions play better if you see them in a single, continuous shot. But other emotions play better over multiple shots, so you can build up and come down. Consider this scene, where Luke Skywalker tests his skill. <sighs> to make this simpler, let's just focus on how long each shot is held for. Notice that as we build, each shot gets shorter and shorter towards the climax. But after five shots, we hit the peak and start coming down. Not only are the shots getting longer again, they're actually held for longer than they were the first time. And this whole sequence spends about 15 seconds going up, but twice that amount coming down, so that we, the audience, have time to feel Luke's failure. I can't. It's too big. But what happens if you shorten this timing? Let's take a look at a very similar scene, done more recently. See if you can feel the difference. You can do it, Scott. Come on. They're not listening to me. Did you believe that emotion? Because in this scene, Scott's failure took 30 frames. By comparison, Luke Skywalker's failure took 30 seconds. People aren't machines. 
We need time to feel the emotion. And if the movie doesn't give it to us, we don't believe it. And I'm finding in movies recently that I've seen a lot of things I don't believe. I think people are sticking stuff out there and asking you to believe it, but they're not making you believe it. And making it believable is really hard. Let Red go. Because timing is not a conscious process. You're just responding to the fact that every shot has a natural rhythm. There's an inbuilt relationship between the story itself and how to tell a story and the rhythm with which you tell it. And editing is 70% about rhythm. Sometimes the rhythm is obvious, like when the actor is doing something really physical. But other times it's quite subtle. For instance, the rhythm of people walking back and forth. Or the rhythm of a restaurant with cooks, customers, waitresses. These rhythms are closer to what we feel in everyday life. And I actually think they're harder to edit. But if you watch anything over and over again, you eventually feel the moment when the shot wants you to cut. Classical Hollywood editing is all about cutting with the rhythm. And this is what we mean when we say that editing is invisible. The cut happens so naturally. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to know about me? That you don't notice it. Would you uh, like to go over to my room? But you don't always have to be invisible. Some emotions play better if you cut in a jarring way, like if someone is agitated. And other moments play better if you actually cut to make the audience uncomfortable. One of the things Marty's always encouraged uh, us to do is to sometimes hold just a little bit too long. And then mm -hmm. make a cut if it's justified. What really matters is, what reaction do you want from people? Because sometimes you can only get that with an unusual cut. And that brings me to my last point. If editing is so instinctive, how do you learn it? I only know one way, practice. And the uh, editing is very similar to dance in that way. You can explain the rudiments of dance, but to really learn how to dance, you have to dance. You have to cut. And as you cut, you'll develop a sense of rhythm and emotion that's unique to you. I've been doing it for 10 years, and I'm still not there. But whenever I'm frustrated by an edit, I think about something Michael Kahn said. The beautiful thing about editing is, I guess maybe writers feel that way, I see all that film up there, it doesn't matter. I'm right. doing one piece at a time. Mm -hmm. One scene at a time, one cut at a time. When there's a lot of film, I just do one thing at a time. So take it one shot at a time. Because if you watch any image, do it again. you'll see it has an emotion and a rhythm. And you have to feel when to 